as we're solving differential equations, it's really nice, as we saw in the prior video, when one side of the equation is just the derivative of y with respect to x, and the other side is just some function of x with no y's on that other side, because we can just integrate both sides and we're done. That, however, does not happen very often. And so what we're going to do is try and attempt to identify the type of differential equation we're working with. And if we can identify the correct type of equation, we can then apply some simple steps in order to solve it. Today, we're going to take a look at separable equations. As we answer the question, how do we solve separable equations? And first, we're going to look at how do we identify these separable differential equations. In general, we're dealing with dy dx is equal to some function of x and y, where that function of x and y is actually a product of a function of x and a function of y, g of x times h of y. And specifically, I'm going to just define h of y in terms of its reciprocal, where h of y is equal to the reciprocal 1 over p of y. This means what we actually are dealing with is dy dx is equal to f of xy, which is g of x divided by p of y. And what we can do is we can multiply both sides of the equation by p of y and also by the dx. And then when we cross off the d of x and the p of y, we end up with p of y dy equals g of x dx. And what we've done is we've separated the x's from the y's. This is nice because now I can integrate both sides. Because the left side is all in terms of y, so we can integrate with respect to y. And the right side is all x's, so we can integrate with respect to x. In other words, our strategy is to separate the x and y's and integrate both sides of the equations. So let's look at doing some examples of separable equations. Let's start with dy dx is equal to negative 6xy. Because the dy is on top in the numerator on the left, we're going to put the y's on the left. So I'm going to divide both sides by y or multiply by 1 over y. That'll move all the y's to the left. And then I'm also going to multiply both sides by dx. And that'll move the dx to the other side. That'll leave me with 1 over y dy equals negative 6x dx. Now we're ready to integrate both sides. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of y. Negative 6x becomes x squared with a negative 3 in front plus a constant. Now, we technically have a plus a constant on both sides of this integral. However, we can subtract that constant from both sides, and then those constants kind of get morphed into one constant. So visually, what I'm saying is we had technically natural log of y plus the first constant is equal to negative 3x squared plus the second constant. But if I subtract the constant from both sides, I get the natural log of y equals negative 3x squared plus whatever constant 2 minus constant 1 is. Either way, that's still going to be a constant. And so we'll use the letter c to represent both those constants combined together. So as we're doing separation of equations, we're going to just put the constant on one side, usually the side with x, but it doesn't matter. Either side works just fine. Now, as we're solving these, 
because we have a natural log of y and we like to have a y equals, I'm going to exponentiate both sides. In other words, I'm going to take e to the power of both sides. Because when we take e to the natural log, that's just going to leave y. And when I take e to the negative 3x squared plus c, that's technically e to the negative 3x squared, well, plus c would be another e to the c, if you think about adding the exponents. But e to the c, e is just a constant. So I can write that as maybe a constant 3, because we put 1 and 2 on the right there in red, times e to the negative 3x squared. And now this is going to be the final solution to my differential equation. A little note about constants. Often in differential equations, we get a little, I don't know if I want to use the word sloppy or lazy. But you'll see e to the c is quickly just abbreviated as just a c. And we just know that's a different constant. And so sometimes I'll drop the subscript. But we, and technically, that's being a little sloppy with our c's. But it's still a constant. And we're not really defining the constant until our final answer anyway. So every c here, the c on the left, the c on the right, the combined c, and the c in the front, those are all different constants. So be careful not to be confused by that. But what's important is it is a constant times e to negative 3x squared. Let's try another example. Let's do y prime equals 4 minus 2x over 3y squared minus 5. And let's give it an initial value. We'll say where y1 is equal to 3. Because we've got an initial value where this function starts, we're going to actually be able to find the constant at the end. But for now, it's going to start out much the same. y prime, that's another way of saying dy dx. So I could have written this problem dy dx equals 4 minus 2x divided by 3y squared minus 5. We want the y's on the left, so I'll multiply by 3y squared minus 5. We want the dx on the right, so we'll multiply by the dx. And so now I've got 3y squared minus 5 dy is equal to 4 minus 2x dx. Now that I've separated the y's and the x's, I'm ready to integrate. When I integrate dy, we get y cubed minus 5y. When I integrate dx, I get 4x minus x squared plus a constant. Now we can actually figure out what that constant is using our initial values. When x is 1, we end up with 3 for y. So I could look at 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 is equal to 4 times x, which is 1, minus 1 squared plus c. Well, 3 cubed is 27. 27 minus 15 is 12. And 4 minus 1 is 3. And so when I subtract 3 from both sides, I see c is equal to 9. And so I can rewrite my green line as a final answer now. y cubed minus 5y equals 4x minus x squared plus my constant, which is 9. So by having an initial value, I was able to actually figure out what that constant had to be in my equation. Also, another vocabulary of note, my example 1 we call this example one solution an explicit solution. Because we were able to solve it for y equals. Example two here, we're going to call this an implicit solution because we were unable to solve for the y equals. 
This one we can't really solve for y, so we're going to leave it like this. It's not really a function, but it is a relationship between x and y. All right, let's solve one last separable equation before I let you go. Number three, dy dx equals 2xy squared plus y squared over x. Here, as we're trying to separate the x's from the y's, you'll notice we've got multiple terms. In order to divide, we need to factor first to separate the x's from the y's. So when I do that, I'm going to factor out a y squared, which leaves behind 2x plus 1 over x. Now you see we can divide by y squared or multiply by 1 over y squared. And I can multiply by dx to clear the dx. And so we have 1 over y squared, which I'm just going to write as y to the negative 2 dy equals 2x plus 1 over x dx. And now, because we've separated the variables, we can integrate both sides to get y to the negative 1, negative, is equal to x squared plus the natural log of x plus a constant. Technically, we're done if we're OK with an implicit solution. But let's try and make an explicit solution by solving for y. y to the negative 1, if I multiply everything by negative 1, a negative constant still a constant. So I'm just going to leave that as plus c. And then y to the negative 1 is 1 over y. So if I do the reciprocal to get y, I can do the reciprocal of the other side, negative x squared minus the natural log of x plus a constant. And we now have the explicit solution for our differential equation. Separable equations are nice. We're stealing the same strategy as we had before in our previous video, where we integrate both sides. The difference is before we integrate, we have to separate the x's and y's to allow us the integration of both sides to solve for y. Practice some of these on the homework. Let me know if you have any questions. And good luck.